Yo, what is up fam? My name is Braxton, and today I'm be doing a quick walk around in my C5 Z06, and also just telling you a little bit about my channel uh, and the content I plan to make, things of that nature, and a little bit about myself, obviously. Um, so a little bit about me, I'm in the army. I've been in the army for four years. I'm currently stationed slash living in Germany. Um, and I came to Germany to do car stuff, pretty much. I've been here for about two years and I've owned this for about a year now. And I absolutely love it. From the Nürburgring to all the amazing roads, it's amazing. And then of course the Autobahn, right? Everybody thinks Autobahn when they think Germany. But pretty much I would like to bring that experience to you guys so y'all can just see like what it's like to live out here as an American, as a car enthusiast, whatever you want to call it. But I've been into the review where we will start with my suspension. So as you see, the car is a little bit lower than a stock C5. So it's lowered on its stock lowering uh, bolts. Pretty much, I lowered them as far as they could go stock. That's about an inch, which isn't a lot, but it's perfect for what I like to do with the car, which is spirited driving, road tripping, all that good stuff. So this is perfect for me. Um, my car is up on DRM Revalve Bill Stein shocks, which if you have a C5 and you're looking for a budget suspension upgrade, I can definitely recommend the DRM shocks. I will include the link in the description, but these transform the car. When I say transform, I mean transform. So with the stock C5, you feel like you're riding on top of it and not in it. You get what I'm saying? Like it's like a monster truck or something. So with these shocks, it helps you to feel more connected with the car. And I definitely enjoy them. Um, also, I have the DRM aluminum power steering rack bushings. That's a mouthful. So these were a mod I chose to do because I thought they would really help with the steering feel of the car. Because I come from Miatas, Import Civics, all that stuff. I've had three Miatas and I absolutely adore them. But pretty much I wanted a more direct steering feel because stock, these are pretty vague. And I thought the aluminum uh, power steering rack bushings would help. I couldn't really tell the difference, but I'm not gonna say they didn't work. I just couldn't feel it, you know? And so what a car is sitting at now, it does handle pretty well and I'm happy with it. It's like a big Miata, which is just a big go-kart essentially, you know? Moving on to my braking setup. I'm still running stock calibers and I'm still running stock rotors, but what I've done is what I would call a stage one brake package for the car. Pretty much this consists of stainless steel lines, high performance brake fluid. I run ATE type 200, very good DOT for high performance brake fluid. Um, if you track your car or just in the spirit of driving, I definitely can recommend it. It's about $17 for a liter, which if you know high performance brake fluid, that is nothing and it works well. Um, I'm happy with the way the car stops when I'm just out doing spirited driving, but on track, I have noticed that the pads do fade and I plan to switch over to a different compound and I will show you my new setup and my unboxing video that I'll be putting out shortly, but it should definitely be interesting. Moving to the interior, this was a big focus for me because the stock T5 interior, while nice, has some not so nice parts. We'll just say that. So, and I'm sure you can guess by just looking at my interior. The stock steering wheel is terrible. The stock seat is terrible. And the stock shifter is terrible. Those were my main focus points so I could feel more connected with the car and have a better driving experience. So, I have a NRG hub with NRG deep dish, 350 millimeter steering wheel. I like this setup. I feel like this is the perfect size. I feel like the steering is more responsive and I can feel more through it. So it was a mod I would recommend. The short throw shifter, huge different. The stock shifter on these things are not pleasant. It's like driving a dump truck. That's how long the throw is. So, 
one of those things that I felt like was necessary to get the full driving experience from the car and it definitely helped. I'm running a OMP Champ R fixed bucket seat and I do daily this thing. But I went with the seat because I wanted a nice fixed bucket seat. I had a Sparkle Sprint before and it was like one of those wire back ones, did not like that. So I wanted to try a fiberglass one, see if that was more comfortable. And I've been very happy with this seat. I paid about $300, $350 for it. So awesome here on a budget. So I'm gonna say that OMP is one of those brands that not enough people talk about. They make quality stuff. So if you're in the market for a racing bucket but don't want to spend Recaro money, definitely check them out. These seats are nicer than the Sparco Sprint at the same price point. So definitely something to check out. Moving on to the engine. There really isn't much to see here. It's a stock LS6, 405 horsepower, 400 foot pounds of torque. I did a reliability mod, which that was changing the valve springs. So the stock C506 valve, valve springs have been known to break. And in a push ride motor, if you break a valve spring, you're more than likely gonna drop a valve. And if you drop a valve, it will hit your piston and then the motor's done. And these motors aren't cheap, so it was just cheap insurance, pretty much. I also did this thing called the zip tie mod, which is pretty much take off the cover of your air filter, and then you put a K in that filter. I have a, a loose zip tie. I should probably fix that, huh? But it makes more induction noise, and it's known to pick up about 10 wheel horsepower. I think it was a good mod. You know, I always like hearing my car a little bit more. Um, I'll go ahead and start it up for you guys, so you guys can hear it for yourself. Moving on to the wheel and tire setup. I'm running C5Z rear wheels all around. So the reason why I went with this particular setup is because I wanted a square tire setup and the rear wheels on the C5Zs are 18 by 10.5s. So you're able to get a lot of tire at all four corners and it makes the car feel neutral because the stock setup is a stagger setup and it makes the car understeer and it just doesn't feel that good like when you're out driving. But with this new square setup, the car feels a lot more balanced. I haven't tracked with this setup yet, but I'm really looking forward to see how the setup feels now. For tires, I'm running Federal 595 RSRRs, and these are the predecessor to the Federal 595 RSR. And I ran those last season and I really enjoyed those. They were a great dual purpose tire and they did everything I needed to do. They did get a little bit greasy when they got hot, but I believe that Federal did make improvements and it also has a stiffer sidewall. So I think overall improvements will be noticeable when I actually get a chance to push them. I actually just got the car back a week ago, so I haven't really had the opportunity yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I do daily drive this car, as I said, so it was important for me to have a pretty decent audio system, so I didn't want to spend too much, so I pieced together my own little kit. I went to eBay and Amazon to piece together a budget kit. I put a system in my car for about 400 bucks. This consisted of aftermarket head unit and a 12-inch sub to get everything going. I'll show you my setup. As you can see, I got a flush mount box. It fits perfectly, and I love it. Well, this is pretty much the end of my car. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, please do like and subscribe. I plan to produce some awesome content to try and pretty much just paint the picture of how of how life is out here in Europe. My next video is gonna be a review on my C5 on one of my favorite driving roads, local. So definitely be on the lookout for that. 
Thanks for watching. Peace.